Back to the Future, the animated series, episode 7, Time Waits for No Frogs and Einstein's Adventure. This is a pretty interesting episode. It's the uh, final episode on the very first disc, so I'm finally, after starting, I don't know how many months ago, uh, actually starting the series up, I'm finally going on to the second disc. But this is pretty cool, because what they did with this episode, and the reason it has uh, two titles, is because it's actually two shorts in one. Um, it's not split right down the middle, like the second one, like Einstein's Adventure, really is Einstein's Adventure. It's probably only maybe like five or six minutes, and then the rest of the episode is kind of like a normal episode. And in this one, it's pretty entertaining. I think both of them are pretty cool, and I actually really like the Einstein's Adventure thing, just because it was kind of like, oh, this is sort of out of nowhere. Like, it's just like this random thing. But the, the first one was pretty good, too. And it's actually um, just a duo adventure. It's Doc and Marty, like classic Doc and Marty. And it starts off, it's really weird, like some of the funny stuff that happens in the show that you never think of in relation to Back to the Future. But Marty had athlete's foot, and so um, it starts off where Doc has him uh, hooked up to like this crazy machine and he's flipped upside down. And then like these little robotic birds like, you know, kind of nipping at his feet and it's supposed to um, stimulate like blood flow and kind of help ease the itching and stuff of athlete's foot. So Marty's like, you know, this is almost painful like you know anything that'll help stop this torture I'll do and so basically what they have to do is go like way way back in time and go to uh, like the Amazon rainforest to get like these crazy uh, really big frogs that secrete like this um, poison but just in the right amount naturally uh, it would help cure Marty's athlete's foot but a little too much and it's deadly poison so they go back in time they try to catch these frogs and it's using like sound waves and stuff they have like a tiny special tuning fork and so what ends up happening is after they use this tuning fork a bunch of the frogs jump out and it's like okay you know he has marty like this little it, it's almost like a crossbow but it's actually a slingshot it's like a cross it looks like a crossbow but um and not even a slingshot a catapult it's a crossbow with a tiny little catapult instead of a um a bolt and so when it shoots it actually launches it was so weird it was basically a small prize or, or not a prize but like a gift it looked like a gift wrap box that you would get for christmas and it was like this tiny little thing and then it opened up and then the net was on the inside and i was like that is the weirdest like i don't know why they decided to draw it that way where it looked like a christmas gift but that's what it looked like it was like a crossbow that had a catapult instead of an actual bolt like a crossbow bolt and then what it launched was basically a really tiny Christmas gift that opened up in midair and then turned into a net. Because I didn't know what to expect, honestly. I was like, it's, it looks like a Christmas gift. I don't know where this is headed, but it was just a net. And I was like, okay, that was just weird design. So they shoot this net out, and it ends up landing on some Spanish conquistadors. That was a huge issue because they are not exactly nice. It turns out that these people are looking for the lost city of gold. So, um, they end up letting Marty and Dot go simply because, the, like, the main guy, and this is one of those weird elements where it's like, every, the characters look really weird, like, the main guy that let them go, he looked totally normal. The other two people that were with him, one guy was completely green, and the other guy was, like, a yellow fuzzy gorilla. Like, he, like, you could see, like, he had, like, so much hair, it was kind of sticking off, and it was, like, yellow, it was gold, and I was like, this is insanely weird like just every other episode or something here's like just a blue character or a green character and then there's like a short green dude and then like a, a taller dude in this episode who looks like a golden fuzzy gorilla so it was super weird looking at them like i just don't understand why this guy is green and why this guy is gold but it was super funny to me so the main guy decides to let marty and dot go because you know they tell him everything they're like hey we were just trying to catch some frogs that was it and so he lets him go and so his guys are like, you know, you don't actually believe they're just looking for frogs. And he's like, of course not. They're probably here searching for the city of gold. So we'll find, you know, we'll let them find it and we'll just follow them and then, you know, we'll reap the rewards. So what ends up happening is Dr. Marty are like, well, that was crazy and unique that they actually, you know, let us live. So let's try to get one of these frogs and let's get the heck out of here. But, excuse me, they actually end up being captured by the native people of the land. And so they're taken and they're supposed to be sacrificed. And it's like, oh, that's where we find out about all the frogs, um, the frog poison being really, really bad. Because when they're about to be sacrificed, Marty's, you know, Doc like freaks out. And Marty's like, what's the big deal? It's just a couple, you know, a bunch of frogs. Like, they're going to cure my athlete's foot. Why are we freaking out? 
And they do a really great reference where Doc is like, you remember what happened to the Wicked Witch at the end of The Wizard of Oz? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, we, you know, in this situation, that would be lucky. If, you know, we melted like that, that would be so lucky if it was that simple. And um, it was kind of funny to me, but Mario's like, oh, what a world, because that's what the Wicked Witch says when she melts. Um, but I was like, okay. So a bunch of the poison naturally kills them. You know, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So... Once that happens, they're freaking out. They're like, okay, well, this could actually be an issue. We have to find some way to get out of here. The conquistadors are checking them out. It's like, okay, they found the city of gold. Let's go in and, you know, basically ransack the place and get everything we want. So as they're about to be sacrificed, uh, they have, like, some music playing. And it was really funny because when I was listening to the music that the people were playing before, like, the sacrifice, I was like, this is kind of a nice tune, and it went right to Marty saying, like, I know we're about to die, but, like, you gotta admit, that tune's pretty sweet, and I was like, I was thinking the exact same thing, it was odd, it was just, like, a pretty nice, it was a catchy tune, and so, um, Doc was like, all right, well, if you can cause a distraction, then, hey, we can probably get out of here, like, all I need to do is get that tuning fork that I used before, you know, tap it, the frogs will freak out, they'll probably just leap right out of the pit, and then there'll be nothing they can do. They won't be able to control them because the sound of the tuning fork will be driving these frogs crazy, and they'll just be leaping all over the place. So Marty starts dancing because, of course, his feet are itchy, too. He's like, I can barely even stand still, you know, let alone cause a distraction. And Doc was like, well, just dance. Like, that can be the distraction. So Marty starts dancing and stuff, and then, for whatever reason, um, one of the guys that's on the instruments let Doc use it for a second. He's like, hey, you mind if I, you know, get a couple of notes in? And so he takes a button off his jacket. He was, like, doing some sharpshooter type stuff. He put a button inside. It was basically a didgeridoo. It was, like, this super huge thing, like a bazooka style. And somehow he put a little button in there, had enough air force to cover the entire expanse of this circle, and shot this button straight at a tuning fork. And I was like, that is some, like, like that's a sniper movie that he just did. But he hits the tuning fork, all the uh, frogs end up freaking out. And of course, with this being like way, way back in the day, they just assume that Marty's dancing is what caused the frogs to freak out. Like, oh, he can control them with his movements. And so Doc is like, hey, let us go free or he'll sick the frogs on you guys. And then that's when the conquistadors show up. And that's when Marty and Doc end up teaming up uh, with the native people. And so they basically kick the conquistadors out of there. So... That's pretty much how that works. It's like, you know, they kick them out of there. Uh, Marty nearly kills the main dude, and they have to show it because it's a kid show. But all the people are running out because, you know, they had the frogs freak out again and jump on them. So all the guys take off, and the main guy uh, runs out last, and Marty's already outside the door. So he trips the guy, and it's basically like this village, the, the City of Gold, is on a mountainside, and there's literally like just one path in and out of this village, and it's like... It's like when you see stuff in TV shows where it's like it's like this crazy high bridge with like no barriers around it or anything. It was like that. It's like a mile long stone bridge and it was that's the only way. It was like all the land was over here, tiny little bridge, and then this was the city and it was basically on the back of a mountain. So there's like one way in and one way out. So they're running out. Marty trips this dude, he falls off this bridge. I was like, he just killed that guy. But naturally, he falls super far and he lands in some water. I was like, okay. So he lived. Then he fell off a waterfall, and they didn't show what happened for a couple of seconds. I was like, okay, so he's dead. Like, I'm saying he's dead. They cut back to Marty and Doc. They take the frog, and it's like, all right, you know, there's probably something we can do to help you guys so that the conquistadors can't come back to your village. And then it cuts to the guy coming out of the water, and I was like, okay. It's a kid show. They had to show that he lived. But it was like some G.I. Joe type stuff where every time a ship blows up, you see a dude on a parachute. But there are a couple of times you don't, and I'm always like, they died that time. Like, they... Every once in a while, but this is what it was, well, that's what I felt like watching this episode when he tripped him. I was like, he fell miles before he hit the water, which would have, it would have killed him. But, you know, he does that and he falls off the waterfall and they don't show him for a little bit. And I was like, oh, he's dead. And then it's like, they show him pop up, you know, out of the water. I was like, okay, they have to show that he actually lived because it's like, he could have died, that sort of thing. You can't have that in the kid show. But that ends up happening, that's the end of the Conquistadors, but I felt like they had to put that in there to be like, no, look, he's officially alive. They couldn't leave that ambiguous, I think. So when Doc and Marty leave, they, of course, take one of the frogs so that Marty can cure his athlete's foot. And then, this is really dumb, but <laughs> they had the idea to, like I said, there's literally one way in, one way out, just miles and miles up in the sky, this bridge. So the idea 
to help the people in the, the city of gold was like, okay, I think we know a way to stop the conquistadors from coming back to your village. They fly the DeLorean into the pillars of this bridge as they shoot back into the future and it destroys the entire bridge. And that was their plan to save these people. And I was like, they're just gonna die there. And it was fun, they kind of made a joke to it too because after they destroy the bridge and Doc and Marty take off to the future, the leader of the village is like, anybody got a rope? And he laughs about it and I was like, they made that joke but those people, it was like a really weird thing because I'm like, that's not a good plan. They will all die because they're on a mountaintop. They have nowhere to go. They have like this small village and that's, you know, they're all gonna die off now. And I was like, that's just so weird to me. It was so funny watching that because I'm like, they, they kind of made a joke about the fact that they don't have a way to get off. Like, realistically speaking, they wouldn't, and they would all die. And I was like, that was just so weird. I thought they were going to do something with the frogs and be like, hey, here's this tuning fork. If they come at you, you know, set the frogs up like this, you know, hit the tuning fork, and the frogs will freak out and go away from you, and they'll go, you know, away from the tuning fork, which will send them towards, you know, the conquistadors. That's what I thought they were going to do with that, and that did not end up being the case. They just destroyed the entire bridge and just went back to the future, and it was just like, huh. Those people are dead. It was just such a weird thing. Like, that was one of those ambiguous things where it's like, you kind of left that open. They will die. And it was just so funny. I was like, that's such a weird way. It just made no sense to me why they could do something silly with the frogs. I mean, this being the animated version of the show, they do a million things that are just super crazy and weird. I don't like them going back in time with the dinosaurs when, they, when the dinosaurs ruled instead of humans. And somehow... Doc's Universal Translator worked on this dinosaur language that never existed in the original timeline, but somehow it worked in this timeline. It was like, that doesn't make sense. So, if I can, if I can be fine with that, they can, they can do something a bit more logical than, let's destroy the whole bridge and just leave the city on the side of a mountain. I'm like, that's weird. Weird way to end that. But, of course, they end up getting, you know, going back to the future. Everything's fine. Um, you know, Marty's athlete's foot is cured. And they're good to go. And that was really the end of the episode. They destroy the bridge, go back in time. Marty's rubbing the, you know, the frog on his foot. Everything's great. And that was the end of the episode. That was how that went, ultimately. And then that's when it goes into uh, the second story, which is Einstein's Adventure. Also a crazy little episode. It's really funny. So it starts off with um, Einstein and Doc at the gas station. Doc is, like, fueling up the car. And he's like, he's losing his mind. He's like, oh man, you know, like, I can't wait for it. Like, this place that we're going is going to be so absolutely amazing. It's like the best place in town. And he's like, he gets out and it was super funny because he was super excited. He's like, it closes in seven minutes. Let's go. Like, he didn't care that the your car got fully filled up. So they take off. And of course, it's just like one of the science stores in the city. So he's like, you know, Einstein decides to stay in the car. He's like, don't worry, honey, I'll be back in like five minutes. He goes in the store and he's nerding out and stuff. And then across the street, two bank robbers leave a bank. And so they're like, you know, typical cartoon idiot bank robbers. Where it's like, you know, where's the getaway car? And it's like, oh, I thought you were bringing it because I brought it last time. So they see the DeLorean. It's like, oh, no big deal. We'll take this piece of junk. And so they get in the DeLorean and Einstein um, moves from the front seat, the front passenger seat to like the back. And so he's like laying down. So they get in the car and take it off. And then he kind of wakes up as it's moving and he realizes that it's two random people and it's not, you know, it's not Doc. So they're like counting the money and stuff like that and they see him and he freaks out. They do, you know, kind of the thing where it's just a cloud of smoke and stuff is, you know, money's flying and then you see Einstein and the two guys. And as they're fighting, they're going towards this brick wall and they all freak out, but naturally they're in the DeLorean. So they hit 88 miles per hour. They shoot back in time, which was actually kind of a cool way to do it because it was the voice activation thing that they basically did in the first episode because the guy, um who asked like the other dude he's like he was like a short guy and a tall guy so the short guy was the one who asked where the car is so he was in the passenger seat while the bigger guy ended up driving and so he's counting the money he's like you know how much do we have and he was like uh i think he did you know come where he said like you know it's like 2800 or something and he was like it's like 1918 or something like that and he said sydney because the guy's name was sydney and so it calculated in the time circuits as like 1918 sydney australia so they, when they shot back in time, that's where they went to. And I just thought that was a cool little thing. I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool way to do that. Because I'm like, I know they're going to travel somewhere. But, you know, Doc was just going to the store. He was just driving around town. So how are they going to actually shoot back through time if there's nothing set? So it was a cool little way to do that with the voice activation. They end up in Sydney, Australia. Einstein is thrown out of the DeLorean. He ends up 
Um, it's just super funny. But he ends up running into a, a red kangaroo. It's just like with the random people that look different colors. It was a completely red kangaroo. It was like, it was a red kangaroo. So he has like this little necklace. He pushes a button on the necklace because the kangaroo is trapped in like um, a little like rope trap. Its leg is caught. So he presses, Einstein presses this little button on his necklace and the tiny little uh, scissors come out, snap the rope and it's like cool. He helped out the kangaroo. So the guys, uh, the bank robbers are in this car. They actually drive through this prison and this is where they actually end up running into the ancestor of Biff. Like, he doesn't show up in the main story with the Conquistadors. He's in Einstein's adventure. So he's the one who's, like, running um, this Australian, you know, little prison encampment. And the guys do end up getting arrested, and they, like, breaking bricks and stuff. It, and it was super crazy. But like I said, it was a red kangaroo. Einstein saving the kangaroo led the kangaroo to take him to this prison. He was in the pouch of the kangaroo. He got out. He was sneaking to get into the DeLorean. The two guys saw him and was like, hey, it's that dog. Help us. You know, they're like talking to the dog like, hey, please take us you know, back to our own time. So they end up throwing the hammers up in the air. They you know, knock out Biff. I'm just going to call him Biff. And so they end up getting in the car. And like just before uh, they're able to make their full escape, the kangaroo comes back to help them because Biff was like about to get in their way. And he like knocks uh, Biff down. And the kangaroo kind of helps Einstein at the last second. And it's kind of like a little small exchange like you helped me out I, you know, I brought you here and that was my helping but I came back for a random reason and I knocked him out and so they were able to go you know back into the future and I was like all I could think of this is super nerdy but it made me think of Resident Evil 4 where early in that game you find this wolf and it's caught in a bear trap and you can let it out of this bear trap and then it's like three hours later into the game three four hours later in the game you fight this really giant boss and the wolf will come back as like a little distraction for the boss so that you're able to like walk behind it and do it. Like if you don't help the dog, it won't show up later in the game. But it's one of those little things that you can do. And that's all I was thinking of. I was like, this makes me think of Resident Evil because Einstein helped this red kangaroo. And then it already helped him by taking him to the prison. But then it came back and helped him at the last second to help him actually escape in the DeLorean with the other two guys. So really silly, but... They end up going back to the future. Um, Einstein like hits this button and ejects the two dudes out. Apparently, <laughs> across from the bank that they robbed, and literally one store over from where Doc was, was the police station. So they were across the street where they robbed this bank, and they went towards the police station to get to the DeLorean. Like the DeLorean was parked in front of the store that Doc was in. So like the DeLorean is here, and this is you know Doc's store is like a little bit up further. The police station was right here. So when they went back in the, to the future and he ejected them out, Einstein shoots them out of the car and then just pulls in reverse like this. And he's in front of the store that Doc was at. And I was like, they were literally across the street, robbed a bank, and then went towards the police station to get the DeLorean. And it just made it so funny to me. But ultimately, everything works out fine. Um, Doc gets in the car and, you know, he just thought Einstein was asleep. But then he looks at the gas and it was like completely empty again because they were like flooring it when they went back in time. So it was kind of funny. He's just like, you know, that's really weird or whatever. And so they go to get more gas. And that was the official end of the episode. But it was a cool little bonus thing. I don't know why they decided to do it that way. They probably just didn't have enough extra stuff for, you know, Doc and Marty's little duo adventure. But I thought it was cool. I actually liked the way that they did that. And it was, you know, literally Einstein's little adventure is his solo thing. And a you know, little five minute clip of two crappy bank robbers getting shot back in time. That's where we, you know, like I said, we get our Biff reference. And then ultimately two animals work together to send Einstein back to where he belongs. And that was how the episode officially ended. But pretty interesting episode for sure. Uh, both stories are interesting. You got crazy gold humans and green humans there. You got a full on red kangaroo, unless those exist. And I've just never known if there's a red kangaroo out there like little red foxes. I, I guess. I don't know. But I've certainly never heard or seen that in my entire life. And it was just really funny. I was like, they could just make a brown kangaroo. It's not... It was just weird to me. I was like, I don't understand why this kangaroo is completely red. I, maybe it would have been difficult as far as the actual background and its animation. I don't know. But they made a full-on red kangaroo. And it was just super funny to me. I was like, this is so weird to me why they made a red kangaroo. But I like the episode, of course. If you guys have seen it, we'd love to know what you guys thought about it. Um, 
if you have any random questions, you can, you know, let me know about those as well. But either way, please comment below. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. Like I said, if you've seen it, want to know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts about it. If you have any random questions about it, if you haven't seen it, of course, you can ask those as well. But either way, please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.